Thank you so much, Heiko, for your inspiring speech. Dear ladies and gentlemen following us online today, I'm Michael Roth, Michael Roth, the German Minister of State for Europe, and I have the privilege to be the moderator of the next of the upcoming panel discussion. I'm now very pleased to introduce this high-level panel Together with our Western Balkan partners and the European Commission, we would like to speak about the perspectives from the region. I warmly welcome our colleagues from the European Commission and the region. Dubravka Suica, the Vice President of the European Commission for Democracy and Democracy. Oliver Vaheli, the European Commissioner for Neighborhood and Enlargement, the Foreign Minister Gent Chakai from Tirana, the Foreign Minister Melissa Haradinai Stubla from Pristina, the Minister of Foreign Affairs Sridan Damanovic from Podgorica, the Foreign Minister Buja Osmani from Skopje, yeah. the Deputy Foreign Minister Josip Bukic from Sarajevo, and last but not least, the head of Department for Regional Initiatives, Pavle Jankovic from Belgrade. A very warm welcome to all of you. Thank you for taking the time for our discussion today. Dear colleagues, dear participants, dear friends, we have just heard from our colleague Heiko Maas about the German perspective on the topic youth, migration, and demography in the Western Balkans. Our conference really is about the perspective of young people. What are their perspectives? Why do many of them want to leave their home states? What are the key challenges and what can policymakers both in the region and in the EU do about it? What should we do about it? As some of you might know, we have prepared this conference very intensively over the past months. <coughs> Sorry. The Regional Youth Corporation Office, RICO, and the European Think Tank Cross Border Factory, together with the Southeast Europe Association and the Aspen Institute, Germany, held weekly workshops with 12 young women and men from across the Western Balkans. During all together 30 meetings, the participants discussed challenges in their countries across borders and discussed policy approaches, possibilities and opportunities. It's only logical that during the conference, young voices are the starting point for our discussions. So before giving the floor to the distinguished panelists, I want to show you a short video where six young women and men tell us what they think. The videos were recorded by the German broadcaster Deutsche Welle. Let's listen to what they say. So nepotism is a big problem here. If you're not somebody's son, daughter, or even a friend, you're more likely not to have equal chances to succeed as a young person. It hurts a lot to see that my friends are leaving the country. They run away because of the corrupted government, the impossibility to find a good job and career advancement. It hurts to see that our parents will be alone in this country. I don't want to be one of them, but the government has to act immediately. What young people in my country need most is quality education, employment opportunity, health insurance, and above all, ecologically healthy environment. First things first, Serbia needs to introduce rule of law so everybody could have equal chances and an opportunity to pursue their goals. Otherwise, young people will leave and Serbia will not have a bright future. 
from the new government, I expect to provide uh, better policy, economic policy that will uh, give us uh, more quality jobs, better salaries, and also to provide us a, a better uh, standard of living so we can have a decent life here. To stop the brain drain of thousands of young people in Albania, the government must improve the education policies and give us the possibilities to have free education. Only in this way we will all be happy, but also qualified to make Albania better than today. Dear friends, clear words. My appreciation to the young people for their frankness and their openness. The topics raised here are not specific to only one country. I would now like to give the word to the panelists and ask for the few and your analysis. Without rules and time limitations, such a conference wouldn't work. That's why I invite all panelists to speak not longer than four minutes. In alphabetical order, we can go to the Albanian colleague first. A very warm welcome to my colleague and friend Gent Chakai from Albania. You have heard these messages by young people from across the region. Frank words. Do you agree with their assessment? And what can we do, or what can you do to improve the situation in the region? The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Minister, for the floor. Uh, and I must begin by thanking you actually for virtually gathering us to discuss a theme of paramount importance for our region. Now, this is a vastly complicated topic, and I could write a PhD in order to respond to your other tough question but I'll try to be as concise as possible as I'm also aware of the time restrictions. So the first point I wanna make is that uh, uh, youth migration is, are you hearing me? Uh, Gant, I can hear you perfectly. Thank you so much, but I can't see you unfortunately, but I can hear you. That's key. Okay, so is it, is it okay if you just hear my voice? because there seems to be some technical difficulties, but anyhow. So the first point to be made is that the, the youth migration is not uh, a, a concern typical or inherent in the Western Balkans. It is rather a global concern. Nevertheless, given the specific needs of our region, we need to treat this problem with specific attention. And it remains indeed extremely worrisome that according to lost Balkan barometers, 43% uh, of the population of the whole Western Balkans have expressed the interest to leave the region or they have at least reconsidered the relocation. So this dramatic shift, of course, will have enormous, would have exerted enormous detrimental consequences for the process of consolidating our economies and uh, democracy in general. Uh, in turn, of course, this uh, such a brain drain would have been unbearable for our countries. So the first thing to do, as uh, Minister Mas has said, is of course work in consolidating uh, uh, rule of law mechanisms and further working in, uh, so now probably the video is going to work, so it seems to have been your responsibility. Anyhow, now you can see me, right? So as I said, we need to keep working in uh, uh, rule of law reforms and also fighting further, for, uh, fighting further uh, corruption and organized crime. Uh, regardless of the issues that we face, uh, which are no secret, in fact, we do also have an obvious asset, uh, which in fact is enormous asset. And that is that our uh, uh, population is among the youngest in Europe. So this is a source of strength and we show uh, working in creating all opportunities for uh, the younger generation uh, and convince them that they chase their dreams in our own countries. So the first element to be emphasized is the need to be working on 
uh, political reforms. Enough Secondly, I want to be blunt about this. Western Balkan, Western Balkan economies have been doing relatively well recently, but nevertheless, they seem to be stuck in an irrevocable tension between sluggish progress and insufficient growth. Referring to uh, uh, the findings of the uh, World Bank, we could see that the GDP of the whole region for 2019 has been 4.5, which is good compared to the previous year, but it's not where we should be. And of course, the crisis uh, that was uh, imposed by the COVID, and in the case of Albania also, uh, given the fact that we have had a, a devastating earthquake in the November last year, these are not factors that are of help and of course are going to complicate the process of social and economic recovery. Nevertheless, we have to appreciate the fact that the European Commission has provided a tremendously valuable package for the process of social and economic recovery. And in addition, also the plan for investments have been presented, which is expected to uh, increase the GDP of the whole region even further. So the second dimension to be emphasized is of course, the need to continue working on economy reforms. Finally, and I'm really sorry for taking uh, probably longer than four minutes, but I'm going to be uh, uh, blunt on this point too. Uh, look, I don't wanna make it overly political, but it's quite clear that prolonged EU integration process and the so-called enlargement fatigue didn't have the best effect possible when it comes to the temper that our population have had in their relation to European Union. In this regard, we have to appreciate the fact that finally the new methodology was provided and its stress was specifically on the need to make the process more tangible. So new methodology shall also generate a new political momentum, uh, which shall, we shall be working on. The March decision to open a session talks with Albania and North Macedonia indeed is a historic one. So it was greatly received by our populations and uh, it has uh, increased our energies to further deliver on all the conditions that were stipulated by the council on March, 2020. Yet finally for Albania, it's equally important to continue with the visa liberalization for Kosovo. There is no objective reason to keep the uh, population of uh, Kosovo uh, any longer isolated. That's not going to cause, let's say, the, or to incite the population of Kosovo to leave massively the country for the Union, but it's solely going to strengthen pro-European sentiments, which in turn are going to be manifested in, let's say, stronger commitment for deeper reforms. There is no uh, objective reason to further delay this process. Sorry for taking a longer than allowed, and I hope I'll have the chance to further take the floor during the discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gant, and uh, greetings to Tirana. That brings us to our colleague Melissa from Kosovo. Throughout uh, the region, we heard young people mentioning worries about corruption in everyday practices and in institutions, in education. The rule of law and the fight against corruption are also key aspects of the stabilization and association agreement with the EU and important for visa liberalization. Kosovo is ranking in the Transparency International Corruption Perception Index has worsened over the past years, unfortunately. Is it not time to reverse this trend? What action does the government in Kosovo plan? Mm. The floor is yours, dear Melissa. Uh, thank you to the host who just unmuted me. Sorry for uh, taking longer. Uh, honored Minister Maas, Honored Minister Roth, dear colleagues and friends from the West, both young relatives. Uh, I'm addressing you today in this virtual conference filled uh, with hope that the future of our youth will be ever brighter. And the pandemic situation poses many concerns and uncertainties for each of us. Uh, I'm sure the world has managed uh, in very difficult times. Only together now we can triumph again. Uh, 
So I want to also use this opportunity to thank Germany, EU, and uh, all the other friends and allies across the world for the great support they provided for Kosovo during this very difficult time uh, for all of us. And so will they may well be under 35 in Kosovo. And this is the fact that makes us a hub for only innovation, energy, creativity, but also opportunities for untapped potential. And I agree with the uh, colleagues before that uh, we have a long way ahead and we can do a lot more. So although a we are a country that came out of a genocide war 21 years ago with the many tragic casualties and still seeking justice, together with our allies and friends uh, across the ocean and within Europe, we've managed to uh, and a little shining star, I can say, in the Western Balkans, uh, continuing to uphold EU values of freedom and respect, rule of law and justice, media and vibrant multiculturalism, diversity, and great talent, I must say. We're also well aware of the never-ending journey, and we are aware of the very long way ahead of us, uh, but we're being union to provide prosperity to the young people, but also to become a, a, in the near or, or a medium-term future NATO member state. So this is as well shared by my colleagues uh, from, uh, from the youth, uh, uh, youth um, generation as well. But how can we each other countries of the Western Balkans in the beginning? Because we form an unbreakable chain of stability and security. How can we envisage this if Kosovo's youth, for example, is afraid to cross the border to Serbia because they might get arrested? So, we can only start building a future together. And I agree with the statement made by uh, Minister Maas, only when we treat each other as equals, only when we mutually respect each other as people with the same hopes and dreams and aspirations, but also with the same challenges, needs and concerns. So I plead to everyone here with us today to stand firm on this principle because by helping each other, we're building a future for all. So by standing, on equal ground and mutual respect for our joint journey towards a common future, and that is the European Union for all of the Western Balkan states. And as well, uh, sorry for maybe taking longer, but I cannot move forward without emphasizing the very disappointing fact that I also represent the only country in the Western Balkans without its right of visa-free travel to the EU, where we belong not only geographically, but also politically and ideologically. So Kosovo youth cannot exchange with their counterparts in the European Union as much as they want to, and therefore feel less equal and more discriminated than others that do enjoy this very basic freedom. So you have asked us to be patient. We were patient. So we fulfilled for eight years in a very long time, of a simple, in a very simple agenda, I must say, a lot of patience and uh, all criteria are confirmed that are fulfilled. So today we ask the European Union to act with resolve and strategic vision and to finally embrace Kosovo youth within itself. Because visa liberalization is not just free travel, it also means influence, exchange, and more importantly, equality. So uh, having the youngest generation in Europe uh, sometimes can always be, uh, can also be a heavy burden. So we to best accommodate our needs and opportunities for all. And we're willing to strengthen uh, many aspects of this uh, prosperity and especially on the digital transformation, because as you know, have access to internet and use internet. So this is a great potential as well for us to strengthen this, uh, this we can build together and uh, I'm willing to exchange a lot more in the next few minutes together. So thank you very much. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you, Melissa. Um, it's also an obligation for the European Union to keep its promises with respect to visa liberalization. I agree with you. Um, this conference is taking place under quite challenging circumstances. That's why I 
apologize the technical problems we, we, we have to face and thank you so much for your patience and for your uh, cooperation. Uh, greetings to Montenegro, to our colleague Sirchan Damanovic. There is a notable level of discontent. Was this also reflected in the election result? Montenegro is now in a decisive phase of the enlargement process with all chapters open, opened. How is this position of being the front runner reflected at home? Is it an incentive for speeding up reforms? Sir Chan, the floor is yours. Dear Michael, dear colleagues, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank Minister Mas for the invitation to take part in this very important conference and express my appreciation to the German presidency of the Council of the European Union for their efforts in promoting and fostering engagement and participation of young people across Europe. <clears throat> this is crucial even more today when the most challenging global crisis in this century is posing considerable impact also on our biggest asset, youth. Emigration from the Western Balkan region is a problem which concerns all of us, even though it hasn't affected each country in the same manner. Regardless of the fact that Montenegro has the lowest youth immigration rate among Balkan countries, or even lower than some EU countries, the trend is still negative, meaning that we need to search not only for national, but also regional answer to this challenge. In that context, there are important prerequisites that we must talk about. Peace and real reconciliation in the Western Balkans are at the top of the agenda, as young people need security and certainty in order to stay. Enhanced and eased student mobility should be further enhanced and eased by ensuring that academic and professional qualifications are recognized. This means that we trust each other and our systems complement each other. Creating more and better quality jobs, increasing jobs specific skills, encouraging entrepreneurship, are key to tackle the youth unemployment. Involving and, involving and empowering youth, youth uh, young women and men in decision-making process can contribute to democratic development, social and economic prosperity, as well as to the European integration process. By implementing new law on youth in 2019 and national youth strategy for the period 2017-2021, the government of Montenegro has improved planning and implementation of youth policy by strengthening the institutional framework and empowering youth services. With the financial support to many projects in field of youth policy and actions towards establishing dozens of youth clubs in Montenegro municipalities and the youth center in Podgorica, we are noticeably creating better environment for young people in Montenegro. The regional cooperation as well as the co collaboration between the EU and the Western Balkans have a crucial role in promoting potential of young people and creating better perspectives. I would like to particularly emphasize the importance of the Regional Youth Cooperation Office, RAICO, as the most tangible outcome of the Berlin process so far. RAICO, through its projects on youth mobility, intercultural exchanges, youth participation, and non-formal education, is establishing stronger ties among young people in the Western Balkans. As the first local branch office of RAICO was established in Podgorica, we are very enthusiastic to step up our regional efforts and take over the annual presidency of the RICO governing board in January 2021. We are also proud that the first activity supported within the technical assistance provided by the RCC's Western Balkans Youth Lab project was implemented in Montenegro. The three-day training was organized in order to strengthen the capacities of the youth service administrators for efficient managing and performance of administrative tasks and duties in youth services as well as to ensure greater networking and cooperation between key national and local youth policy actors. Furthermore, through an active engagement, we need to strive to ameliorate the conditions for our talents to stay and work in Montenegro and in the region. Southeast Europe International Institute for Sustainable Technologies, SAIST, is initiated by the government of Montenegro as a regional project for the enhancement of cooperation in the Balkans in the field of science, transfer of knowledge, and the development of co complementary technologies. The project could enable attractive environment for young people and slow down the brain drain 
uh, or even to revert uh, it and recover the great tradition in technolo technological development that our region had in the past. We are confident that these kinds of initiatives are exactly what we need. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, dear Sirchan. In my capacity as the moderator, I'm always the bad guy. And that's why I invite you again to accept our time limitations. And that brings no. us to uh, Skopje, to our distinguished colleague, Buja Osmani, the former minister of North Macedonia. North Macedonia and Albania have taken further decisive steps towards the EU integration. Our regional cooperation and regional integration and EU accession strong enough drivers to increase opportunities for young people. Buja, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, gratitude to Ms. Minister Mas as well. Greetings to colleagues. Thank you for convening us to discuss this outstanding topic, which certainly will be frequent in our, uh, on our agenda in the future. And I really commend the structured approach of EU German presidency. There is a saying attributed to Franklin Roosevelt, uh, 32nd president of the United States, that captures our mission to be completed in the years to come, which goes like this. We cannot always build a future for our youth, but we can always build our youth for the future. And having in mind our contemporary context, I believe that we have to engage effectively with three essentials that will build our youth for the future. And this is to engage, to empower, and to enable. And I think all these three essentials or three E's are intertwined and interdependent and depend on political will. And uh, of course, in order to work, they must be supported by effective policy solution. With engage, I mean, we must initiate a structured process of engagement that will raise the awareness of young people that they are critical for the future of the countries of our region. When crafting policies, policymakers should engage in a process of active listening, hearing our youth on views, hopes, and fears. In parallel, young people, based on their credentials and know-how, should be willing to be engaged across different sectors. And we must create precondition for a two-way process of active engagement. With empowering, I mean, exploring and creating, creating avenues that will lead towards empowerment of young people. Engagement is only the first step. We need to be strategic in this process that ventures educational and professional opportunities, vocational training, and before a sense of empowerment. Young people must feel engaged and empowered, not left alone. And they should not go elsewhere to seek this sense of empowerment. And I think this is crucial if they could find and feel this at home. And by enabling mean including them, including in policy making is, is a crucial moment. By engaging, empowering, and providing them the means to foster their way of living and thinking, we may achieve a crucial step. I think a lot has been done, but we need to do more and better involving them in policy making. And this leads towards a sense of belongingness, which in turn inspire hope and willingness not to, make, uh, to migrate. And I think this has been uh, our uh, commitment as a country from first day of independence, building a stable, functioning, multi-ethnic democracy that, in, in, that will engage and empower various groups in its political and socioeconomic spectrum. And I have to emphasize here that the EU promise has been an important transformative factor and driver of reforms and will continue to serve its purpose as we move along with the more sophisticated phase of negotiation. And here, I, at the end, I would like to join the others and express our readiness for active contribution in addressing uh, the, these challenges and the regional platform that we uh, are, have been building in the recent period, especially through the Berlin process, is going to be a huge opportunity to engage and to empower, empower youth. Thank you very much for, for listening. Thank you, Buja. And now, greetings uh, to Bosnia and Herzegovina, to Josip Birkic. Many young people see stagnation and uh, few career opportunities at home. Bosnia and Herzegovina is badly hit by 
emigration trends. What do you do to counter this? Josep, the floor is yours. Josep? Right, okay. At the very beginning, uh, let me express my appreciation to the Minister Maas for the organizing this important conference under the German presidency and by honoring us in his virtual and taped presence in this surrounding. My greetings to Vice President Schuitze, my greetings to our Commissioner Varheli, and of course, to distinguished colleagues, ministers, excellencies, and ladies and gentlemen in the virtual present. In the recent years, your, a focus of the European Union has been on migration waves originating from Africa and Middle East. However, we are to get to, today together discussing another migration which is from the Western Balkans. My country has been shaped and characterized by various forms of migration through its history. In recent years, our states has been threatened by the waves of illegal migrants from the underdeveloped war-torn countries. The destination of the migrants are the rich countries of the EU. Because of the policy of closed borders, migrants stay in Bosnia and Herzegovina, live here in miserable conditions in the camps. We as a state find ourselves in a difficult situation, not only because of the increase wave of illegal migrants on our territory, but also because of our citizens are increasingly leaving the country and trying to find the jobs in Western European democracies. It is our harsh reality that many young people see stagnation and few career opportunities at home. Bosnia and Herzegovina is badly hit by immigration trends. It is primarily young working age population that is emigrating. The ratio of popula population age 15 to 29 in population of Bosnia and Herzegovina in 2019 was 19%. And in the emigrated population, 28.2%. At the same time, population age 30, 44 was 21.5. And a total population of 36.6 of migrants, of uh, emigrants are of that age. Education and healthcare are the sectors that suffer great from brain drain, but we see some worrying trends with engineers, information technology experts, and workers with a vocational education are also leaving the region and my country in massive numbers, and all of them to the developed European countries. Regarding the positive aspect of circular migration, it is present in a study abroad and student exchange programs such as Erasmus Plus and the Central European Exchange Program for University Studies, whose main goal is to connect scientific research areas and development of academic cooperation. Through creating the university network. Unfortunately, there we have a situation that the students who are offered a job mostly stay in the countries where they studied. Based on the analysis of a situation regarding sustainable development in Bosnia and Herzegovina, that is the key development trends, opportunities and obstacles, especially in the context of Bosnia and Herzegovina accession to the European Union and extensive consultations with representation of institutions at all levels of government and socioeconomic actors in 2018, 2019, the directions of sustainable development in Bosnia and Herzegovina have been identified. The directions include smart growth and human capital for the future. Future-oriented measures and concepts, partially uh, responding on your uh, question, colleague Roth. In the presidency of Bosnia and Herzegovina, we have pushed the approval for the declaration on recognition of higher education qualifications in the Western Balkans in July, 2019. We are also support the development of employment and education in Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, started through the IPA project, Technical Assistance for Employment Education. Bosnia and Herzegovina participate in the multi-annual action plan on regional economic area in the Western Balkans, which includes inter alia, a section on free movement of professionals and skilled people. Economic migrations, that is migration flows determined by the wish of men and women to improve their living condition is a reality that is almost as old as mankind itself. 
it is fair to anticipate that the migratory flows to the EU will remain strong in the foreseeable future unless we foreseen all what my distinguished predecessors have said and moved the entire region closer to the European Union. The EU, on the other hand, should try to understand the implications of immigration for the Western Balkan countries and to promote circular migration as means of maintaining their access to expertise in healthcare, education, and other sectors, for example. Thank you very much, dear colleague Roth, for your moderation of this panel. Thank you so much, and greetings back to Bosnia and Herzegovina. And that brings us to Serbia. Uh, last but not least, uh, Pavle Jankovic. Uh, Mr. Jankovic, how can young people see better career chances in Serbia? How can progress be achieved in terms of inclusive societies, education, democracy, and rule of law, so that immigration becomes just one option out of many? The floor is yours, Mr. Jankovic. Yes, uh, thank you very much, um, uh, State Secretary Roth, uh, Vice President Schuitza, Commissioner Vahey, distinguished ministers, and ladies and gentlemen, Serbia welcomes uh, the initiative to organize this event. On the burning topic of young people, migration and demographic challenges, the entire Western Balkans face a similar, if not the same situation. Uh, because young people are out of work with no clear perspective of gainful employment, but also due to uncertainties regarding the EU integration of the region, we are experiencing the phenomenon of mass youth immigration from the Western Balkans to the EU, commonly referred to as the brain drain. Our goal is to create conditions to motivate young people to remain in the Western Balkans. On the other hand, we fully support and encourage the mobility of job-seeking young people throughout our region. Official data show that the share of young people in Serbia's population decreased by over 2%, or according to the 2011 population census, more than 150,000 Serbian nationals aged 29 on average left the country between 2002 and 2011. We will know more about this phenomenon, of course, after the 2021 census. Now, this would mean nothing without consulting the youth. And according to Serbia's youth, the major challenges include lack of job opportunities in their places of residence, unemployment and economic problems, and most powerful motivators for uh, migration, emigration. Research results indicate that young people leaving Serbia departed mostly to look for work. Multiple Serbian governments established pertinent programs and strategies to tackle uh, this important social issue. Uh, Serbia's national strategy, uh, youth strategy for 2015-2025 established nine strategic objectives to decrease youth immigration, to strengthen return flows, and to ensure a favorable circular mobility model. The goal here is to find ways to motivate young people to upgrade their professional and personal knowledge and skills, and then to apply them in Serbia. Since 2013, uh, the Ministry of Youth and Sports supported a thousand projects enabling 100,000 young people to participate in programs aimed at promoting healthy and safe lifestyles, um, spend quality free time, engage in volunteer activities. And additional 215 projects ensured employment and self-employment of more than 1,200 young people while close to 1,900 were enabled to pursue professional training and more than 23,000 were given an opportunity to attend courses and develop competencies required in the labor market. The Foundation for Young Talents in Serbia since 2008 gives scholarships and awards to more than 3,300 high school and university students per year. So far, the foundation granted more than 31,000 awards and scholarships to university and high school students worth more than 70 million euros. As most recently in March 2020, the government adopted the Economic Migration Strategy 2021-27 to regulate the issue of economic migrations in Serbia. The strategy aims to create an economic and social climate, to slow down the brain drain in, of working age population, 
strengthen ties with diaspora, encourage the return of in circular immigration, and attract foreign nationals of various education profiles. Its first three-year action plan will be designed specifically for young people with very concrete measures. Uh, allow me to enumerate them. Partial exemption of social security payments for young people, implementation of the program My First Salary, non-refundable aid for young farmers who register farmsteads, continued development of young science research professionals, and promotion of housing policy measures. Uh, to conclude, in the Western Balkans, we are clearly committed to cooperation and creation of stable societies. Joint action and youth connectivity can contribute to in intensifying exchanges of knowledge and experiences to establish successful channels of communication and cooperation, as well as to overcoming potential uh, political and social discourse. Um, this is why we, as the co-founder and uh, attach, attach really great importance to the Regional Youth Cooperation Office. Uh, RICO creates an opportunity for young people to improve their personal and social skills through project cooperation, to share experiences, learn from each other, and most importantly, to dispel prejudices. Young people represent the most significant potential of our region. We will continue to work resolutely and in cooperation with all our regional partners to strengthen their role and create conditions for young people to prosper here in the Western Balkans. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Jankovic, and uh, greetings uh, to Belgrade. Um, our little journey brings us from the region to Brussels, to the European capital. Uh, special greetings to Vice President uh, Dubravka Zuica from the European Commission. The topic of demography is also a very, very burning issue for the EU itself. What strategies do you see to counter its negative effects? What approaches could be useful for the Western Balkans as well? Dubravka, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Minister Roth. Thank you for your question, dear ministers, uh, dear commissioner, dear ladies and gentlemen. I can agree with Minister Roth that the topic of demography is a burning issue for the European Union. Remember, we are talking about people's lives here, so demographic issues affect us all, including the Western Balkans and others, as we uh, heard uh, a couple of minutes ago from, uh, from uh, honorable ministers. The Western Balkans uh, is no or are no stranger to me. As a Croatian, you as a developer, the region has always been in the forefront of my work. As a member of the European Union, I have spoken out on the accession and reforms process in the region. Now, as Vice President in the European Commission for Democracy and Demography, the region remains close to my heart, not least because the destinies of both the European Union and Western Balkans are linked, closely linked. Uh, you were talking uh, about demography and demographic trends and challenges in the European Union. You know that demographic change is about people and their lives and is of growing importance. It is why on 17 June this year, the Commission adopted its first ever report on the impact of demographic change. And it identifies many trends such as longer life expectancy, fewer births, an aging population and others. And it looks at the impact of demographic change at both the European and regional level on economic growth, labor markets, health and long-term care needs, and public finances. Now that we have this important basis for our work, we seek to address the trends revealed by the report rather than reverse. So allow me to say a few words on our upcoming work on aging uh, and on the long-term rural vision. Our upcoming initiatives include a green paper on aging, looking at intergenerational solidarity and impacts on the labor market. We will publish a long-term vision for rural areas designed to help rural areas in meeting challenges such as depopulation, connectivity, and limited access to services. Both reports are planned for adoption in 2021, and of course, we are moving forward in our, uh, in our work on European Union strategy on the rights of child to be adopted in March 2021. This strategy aims to achieve equal and fair access to education, leisure activities, and other services 
regardless of the origins or social status of children. Furthermore, it will prepare and promote the greater democratic and political participation of children and young people in society. Like aging, the issue of brain drain brings challenges and opportunities. The challenge for us is to turn brain drain into the opportunity of brain circulation leading to brain gain. Our aim is uh, for upward convergence. Europe must be an attractive place to live, work, and raise a family. Convergence means that we cannot leave anyone, any person or region behind. The good news underpinning this is a more educated population. In this, the Western Balkans face a double problem. First, they may not always provide an environment allowing young people to build a career, as we heard uh, from uh, young people. Secondly, when they lose their young people, these countries lose their bridge to the future. Each one of us must empower young people in reclaiming the future. All European policies and actions aim at empowering young people in the Western Balkans from investment in transport and energy to digitalization, quality education and skill development. Young people need new opportunities in their regions. This means structural reform, a sound business climate and public governance, including respect for the rule of law. We are supporting initiatives such as the Regional Youth Cooperation Office, which promotes reconciliation and cooperation in the region. Another priority is removing obstacles to youth employment. The European Union contributes to improving young people's skill sets through specific budget support programs, Erasmus Plus, and vocational education training schemes. We support the mobility of workers, students, and researchers. The number of participants from Western Balkans in actions supported under Horizon 2020 have doubled since, since 2014. Research and innovation are the front runners in the accession process, and so we are supporting education and training reforms. The recently unveiled 9 billion euros economic and investment plan is a proof of our deep commitment. With an eye on job creation, we facilitate access to finance for young entrepreneurs and SMEs through Regional Youth Guarantee Scheme under the EU-led Western Balkans Enterprise Development and Innovation Facility. My colleague, Commissioner Varheli, will provide you with additional information on these actions. What is clear is that these actions contribute to, tackle, to tackling brain drain. Concluding remarks, dear ladies and gentlemen, President von der Leyen said that the Western Balkans belong to in the European Union. We are your friend and partner. As we look to our common future, let me be clear, in the upcoming Conference on the Future of Europe, in our efforts to move forward together with Europeans from every, every corner, it is vital that the Western Balkans find a place in this exercise. I invite you to reflect on your welcome contribution. Thank you very much. So Conference on the Future of Europe is also your activity. Thank you, Madam Vice President. And uh, that brings us, last but not least, to uh, Commissioner Oliver Vaheli. Uh, last week, we had a very fruitful and con constructive exchange of views uh, with respect to the current developments in the region. And now I'm very pleased to welcome you here. I'm not quite sure where you are uh, right now, but a very warm welcome to you. The European path is a key driver of hope of hope for a vivid democracy, for a rule of law, but also for economic growth. The EU Commission has also just presented a substantial economic and investment package. Yet young people, the Balkans mill millennials, see it as a never ending story that has lost its excitement. They want to see more changes on the ground. How can we win them back in their enthusiasm for Europe? Oliver, the floor is yours. Michael, thank you very much. Indeed, it, it was only last week that uh, we discussed uh, our commitment to the Western Balkans and also how to bring it even further to the fore, uh, what we mean and what we would like to offer for the Western Balkans. Um, I think that the Vice President Schuitzer already 
made it very clear how deep our commitment is and in that uh, how much we feel uh, about creating opportunities for the young people uh, in the Balkans. Let me uh, give you three points uh, through which I would want to highlight um, what we do and what we work on. First, we support the creation of jobs, primarily through facilitating access to finance for the young entrepreneurs uh, or for SMEs, creating jobs for the young people. Second, we contribute to improving skills sets and employability of young. Thirdly, we support young people to participate in decision-making and regional cooperation. So these objectives have been taken up very clearly in the Economic and Investment Plan for the Western Balkans, which was just adopted at the beginning of the month. The plan comes at a critical moment when the region is grappling with the COVID-19 pandemic and its aftermath, while at the same time, there is still a need to develop, to bring the economies of the Western Balkans much closer uh, to the EU. Let me start uh, with the first point, with the job creation and economic development. The economic and investment plan is a substantial investment package with up to 9 billion euros of grant funding. In addition, the investment capacity of the region will be boosted through a new Western Balkans guarantee facility that could raise investments of up to 20 billion euros. This could bring about a real GDP growth of over 3.6%, according to the most conservative estimates. The investment package is structured around key areas of crucial importance, focusing mainly on connectivity, boosting the economic development and governance of the region. These areas are, which have been identified together with your governments, are transport, energy, environment, maybe most importantly for the youth, digital, the private sector, and also the challenge of helping the youth. The Western Balkan region where the capitals will be connected through road and rail with each other to the, and to the EU, where there will be clean energy supply with a good energy mix, where everyone will have access to ultra-fast broadband internet, this will be a region with growth and jobs. And this can happen within the next four to five years. Our plan also promotes regional economic integration, the creation of common regional market. As calculations show, this full market integration could lead to almost 7% of additional growth. It would also become more attractive to the investors who want to shorten the supply chains with the EU market. I believe that due to its geographic location and privileged trade relations with the EU, the region has a real opportunity. With all these, I'm certain that the plan provides real opportunities for the young people, not just for the example by facilitating moving around the region and providing be better living conditions, uh, but also offers new, better finance and jobs. And on the skills agenda, I see that uh, Michael is telling me that I'm running out of time. Uh, we have a very uh, clear skills mismatch in the region. And this is the big challenge in front of the youth. And this is where we want to help. We want to help the youth to get the skills the economy needs and to get the new economy, new digital economy and green uh, economy up and running as soon as possible. Therefore, we are providing a youth guarantee scheme which means that we are providing everybody under 20, 19, 29 years of age to receive good quality offer of employment, continued uh, education, apprenticeships, traineeships within four months of becoming unemployed or leaving the formal education. This is touchable, seeable, feelable already from next year. Thank you. Thank you, Oliver, and thanks to all our uh, panelists, to the vice president, to the ministers, to the colleagues. Thank you very much for your commitment, for your statements, for your inspiring words that are extremely valuable for all of us. 
And one important thing, they clearly show that we are in this together and we have to work on these challenges together. In the meantime, uh, dear participants, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have received many, many questions that participants would like to pose to the panelists. I think we have the time to take a few in. I suggest we take a few questions at a time and let panelists answer. Um, it's a long list and um, I would like to invite Exona Bokshi from Pristina. Exona, please, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, uh, dear minister. And uh, I'm speaking today from Pristina. So uh, to all the, the ministers from the region, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for, for giving me the, the opportunity to address uh, the regional ministers, but to you as well, uh, for the migration issues that we uh, young people uh, from the region are facing. I'm really happy that the German EU presidency actually decided to bring the, the regional uh, ministers together to speak about youth and migration problems that we face in, in our region. I would say I am a little bit disappointed by the lack of concrete ideas that politicians today, today spoke, but uh, we're here to talk about them, so maybe this is a, a starting point. Uh, my question is open to the regional uh, ministers and please, whoever feels comfortable. Uh, my question is, um, would you be ready, your uh, governmental uh, uh, in, in the region, would be ready to establish a youth advisory body or a task force that would work on demographic challenges and migration that youth could work with Western Balkan six governments on to bring concrete proposals and ideas how we can find solution to these problems. Thank you. Thank you so much. Exona, greetings to Pristina and thanks. That was very precise. And uh, I hope we can have a good Q&A session. But um, now I would like to invite uh, Samir Beharic from Jace to take the floor. Samir. A very warm welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon from uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, first of all, thank you very much, Minister Roth, in um, hosting um, and moderating this very important conference. Thank you to all the foreign ministers. It's really a great honor for me um, to attend it and to ask a question. First of all, I have to share my disappointment with my colleague, Exona, uh, when it comes to um, hearing, listening, clear measures. Um, from uh, the uh, from our ministers, and I really invite you to take uh, part and to listen to our youth panel uh, starting at 6:30 p.m. Uh, today. It's a youth panel, so you will be able to hear from our perspective how do we want to solve brain drain. Um, my question um, is related to, um, according to a research um, on youth migration from the Western Balkans, um, conducted by the Institute for Development and Innovation, the seat in Belgrade. Um, the governments in the Western Balkans spend up to 6.5 billion euros per year on educating young people who later leave their countries, leave the region. My question, how the European Union will support um, the Western Balkan governments in retaining their educated young people within their countries? And how will the Western Balkan governments act um, towards accepting uh, the help and assistance um, from the uh, from the European Commission in dealing with this problem and saving funds from the budget. Thank you very much. Thank you so much and all the best to you, Samir. And uh, that brings me to uh, Anila Suka from Berlin, Deutsche Welle. Frau yeah, Suka. hello. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Roth. Hello to everybody. My question goes to whom has the answer. Uh, Mr. Minister Roth, you said today in an interview for Deutsche Welle, migration should be a road with two directions. We are very far from it. As many of you said, it is uh, not a new problem. What are the key lessons learned from the past that uh, you adopted successfully in your efforts uh, to uh, actual efforts. Thank you. Thank you so much, dear Mrs. Suka. 
And last but not least, least Srechko Latal from Berlin Investigative Network. Greetings to Sarajevo. Um, <clears throat> yes, uh, hi, uh, Minister Roth, and uh, thank you very much uh, for organizing this uh, conference on, on such an important uh, topic. I have one quick uh, comment and, and one uh, quick question. Uh, the comment goes like this. I hope that you do not uh, truly expect that the reform of the rule of law in the Balkans will regulate the, uh, the, the, the labor migration and especially the youth migration because the rule of law reform is a very long-term process with uncertain outcome and uh, the labor uh, migration is a problem that we have been facing for many years and is uh, now becoming truly critical. Uh, the question goes like this, and then partially Commissioner Verheli and uh, Vice President Schuitza have already answered to this. My question was, uh, do you foresee any possibility or any need uh, for some more immediate projects or programs that, that would address this uh, issue more urgently? But also uh, additional kind of uh, part of the question is, do you see a possibility for uh, some kind of mechanisms or programs for EU member countries which are importing most, most of the labor force to in a way repay uh, at least part of the hundreds of millions of euros uh, which is actually flowing into them uh, by uh, through or through the, 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 the uh, educated labor. So do you see a possibility for some sort of either bilateral or EU run programs that would mitigate this issue? Um, thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much uh, to uh, Srechko Latal. Um, and now I would like to come back to our panelists. I would like to invite you to um, answer the questions as precise as possible and to point out some key issues. And I would like to start with our Vice President uh, Suica. Um, Dubravka, the floor is yours. Ah, I don't forget, I, I forgot the time limitation. It's about three minutes for each panelist. Thank you so much. And thank you for your patience with me. Okay. So thank you very much for these questions. This is very interesting. It's better to have dialogue than, than our monologues. Uh, I see that uh, young people are not very happy with, uh, with the ideas of uh, regional ministers and us uh, because there are no concrete proposals. But I think there are very concrete proposals. When we talk about, uh, uh, about brain drain and mobility, I said it is two-way street. We support mobility. You know that freedom of movement is one of four freedoms, and we, al we always opt for this freedom of movement. So uh, you are talking about hundreds of million euros which are spent for education, of, of education uh, in these countries. I know this is true, but at the same time, once you come to another country, you uh, learn skills, you learn expertise, you learn knowledge. And you can bring this uh, knowledge, expertise, and skills uh, uh, back if you wish. How can you come back? We are investing money in order to make infrastructure and, uh, uh, and your democratic systems uh, good enough in order to make, uh, decent to, uh, to make a decent living in your home countries. So we invest in the region. I said that we uh, are talking about 9 billion euros for economic investment plan, and, uh, plan as, uh, as, uh, as uh, Commissioner Vakherli said, uh, we want to create uh, a common market there and we invest in Horizon, we invest in uh, Erasmus Plus. So uh, once we create an uh, uh, attractive environment, uh, these uh, young people will uh, maybe will, will maybe want to come back, but it's not uh, uh, the only option. We don't want to reverse the trends, but we want to anticipate the, the trends, which means we want to create a very good economic environment in order to uh, make young people stay there. But of course, once they go to the West, it is also very good in order to exchange the knowledge, in, as I said, in order to uh, acquire uh, new skills. And this is also a wealth 
to your home countries. Thank you, Madam Vice President. And that brings us immediately to uh, Commissioner Oliver Vaheli. Oliver, please. We can't hear you, Oliver. Yeah, because I was muted, but now I'm, okay. I was allowed to be unmuted. Uh, very quickly, I think that we have uh, one major topic, uh, which we all know is the single biggest uh, bottleneck, and that is the brain drain. Um, so when I say, I think I also speak of personal experience. I'm coming from a country that is also struggling with this, although it is uh, slowly but surely uh, ending it. What I think is that the solution for the brain drain rests on three pillars. The first is having enabling conditions, enabling conditions in the economy. First is to have the right infrastructure, be it educational infrastructure or transport or digital infrastructure that provides the possibility for the economy to grow. Second, to have the right investors climate so that we have new jobs emerging, new economic opportunities emerging uh, through these possibilities. Third is to have actual offers of interesting jobs uh, for the youth. And fourth, uh, to have the right skills for the youth to be able to enjoy these jobs and to take these jobs. And this is what we should be working on. We cannot address this problem with the silver bullet. We have to work on all fronts and it takes a long time. It takes at least 10 years but if we work consistently on all these fronts, we can turn the tide. This is why we, we propose now the Youth Guarantee Scheme as a first. This is why we insist on knowledge transfer. So bring innovative economy to the region as fast as you can. And there is one other issue, a very daily one, which is that the economy should pay back the region for what it invested into the skills of, the, of, this, of these uh, youth because the home transfers are still a major source of income also for the local economies. We shouldn't only rely on that, but we should ask the youth to come back and not only transfer their funds, but to invest, invest, invest in the region. And that's how you can stop brain drain. Thank you, Oliver. Thank you for your frankness. The problem is that the young generation don't want to wait 10 years, but uh, I fully agree with you. And now, from Brussels back to the region, I would like to uh, start with uh, Foreign Minister Ghent Chakai from Tirana. Ghent, please. Ghent. Thank you very much for giving me the floor again. So uh, this is, of course, very wide and enormously complicated discussion, but I'll try to respond uh, in a concise manner to some of the questions that were raised. So if I understood well, uh, the last participant asked on whether we expect that rule of law related reforms are going to contribute to stabilizing, so to speak, uh, youth migration. And the answer is yes. So we have to see, for instance, if we, when we check the figures, and these are facts, these are not opinions. So the number of young Albanians willing to leave the country has decreased significantly in the last course of the years. And this can be explained by two factors. On the one hand, it's a political factor, and I'm going to uh, focus only on rule of law related reforms that we have undertaken and uh, that are yielding their results. So according also to uh, the last European Commission's report, Albania has made an unprecedented progress when it comes to justice reform. So more than 100 judges and prosecutors, high ranking ones, were removed from the system and new judicial bodies specifically tailored to fight organized crime and corruption and the highest levels were established. And this is, of course, bringing a new political hope. So this is not a fact that we can deny. But of course, this is a process that takes time. And we cannot expect uh, for the changes to occur within a night. On the other hand, we are also working, let's say, on the economic dimension. We have seen that Albania's economy have been developing progressively 
But nevertheless, we need to provide a completely new uh, uh, momentum when it comes to economic growth. And this can be also, this can only be achieved through strengthening regional cooperation and undoing all impediments and barriers which are hindering the growth. So this is more or less of what I can cover. And there was an idea on whether we are uh, ready actually to, uh, to work with specific youth mechanisms. Uh, 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 probably the first uh, uh, participant uh, from the panel uh, asked this question. And I have to be honest, even though I might disappoint you for not providing a very uh, 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 concrete response, I have also to be institutionally responsible. Uh, we need to study that idea. We have to work together. What I can say uh, is that Albania's government is absolutely uh, interested and has the full commitment to work not only with, uh, with youth, but also with all sectors of civil society to strengthen cooperation and tackle the issues that uh, our society face. Now, uh, I see that you are exerting a lot of pressure on me to close it off. But anyhow, I'll stop here, even though there is much more to be said. But Gant, I will, would like to reassure you, we, we will remain friends. <laughs> Absolutely. Promised. <laughs> Promised. From uh, Tirana to Pristina, uh, back to Melissa. Please, Melissa, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Roth. Uh, I'll, uh, I have the pleasure actually to uh, address the answer to Exona Bokshi's uh, question. Uh, and actually comment as well on the idea of having a youth advisory body, uh, which will address the not only the demographic challenges, but also many other pertaining challenges that are common to all of us. So I would uh, invite, we were actually uh, analyzing an initiative from uh, the Kosovo government's point of view to have a prison which houses the ITP center, which um, the German ITP center, uh, which was the former Bundeswehr um, um, camp. So now it has been transformed into ITP center. So I would uh, invite all Western Balkans countries to come and join our effort and our initiative of setting up a Western Balkans regional startup hub center in prison where everyone from the, not only Western Balkans countries, but uh, uh, other friends and allies as well would join us in supporting uh, uh, this hub and this center because uh, Kosovo is an undiscovered canvas for startups and tech companies, and it's a growing sector. So uh, we would like uh, actually to set up the center as a Silicon Valley of the Western Balkans. So I would invite Exona as well to help me uh, in setting up this youth advisory body and actually uh, as well inviting everyone from the Western Balkans countries to join us and set together this, uh, uh, this very important initiative for us. So it will, uh, uh, and I would ask as well for your help in guiding the way forward and paving our journey, uh, journey together. So I can't be more concrete than this. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. And now from Pristina to Botgorica to our distinguished colleague, Sir Chan. Sir Chan, the floor is yours again. Where is Sir Chan? We can't hear you. Hello, Do you, can you hear me now? Yes, oh, yeah. I can hear you. What a I'm surprise. A Surprise, you surprise. look younger than ever. Yes, yeah, Sergio looks better actually now. <laughs> the thing is that, uh, uh, hello from Podgorica, I'm a deputy, uh, Serbian deputy for multilateral affairs. And uh, uh, since he had to leave, I would just briefly uh, uh, comment on the, and actually provide a couple of, of uh, uh, answers uh, to the topic discussed. Uh, uh, first point that we would like to make, and actually to align with the, with the, with the previous uh, uh, Excellency speaker, is about the, the, the reason uh, for the young people to stay in our countries, 
uh, is it a startup hub or uh, something that will truly give them a reason uh, uh, to find their future here? And in a way, besides uh, the regional initiative and the RICO that is giving us uh, uh, a good uh, base for synchronization of the initiatives that we have. I think that all of us uh, have to find uh, uh, this kind of, of um, comparative advantage in concrete things that will keep our youth here. Uh, uh, in regards to this, uh, um, we can only say that the project that uh, the government of Montenegro initiated, the Southeast European International Institute for Sustainable Technologies, uh, should be such uh, initiative that would uh, uh, provide uh, uh, and, and, and the enhancement of cooperation in the Balkans in the field of science, transfer of knowledge, and the development of complementary technologies, uh, uh, giving the young people both reasons to stay here because they can do the success work and the research within their countries and the region, as well as find also uh, uh, financially reasons to, 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 to be successful yeah, even in that matter, uh, uh, when they when they remain in their in their countries, so I think that within our all initiatives uh, and the separate initiatives that we have, uh, uh, we should work on their synchronizations within the the regional cooperation with the support, of course, of the of the EU. So uh, uh, from us, uh, uh, this would be it for now. Thank you, and thank you for yeah. understanding. The minister had to leave. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, my greetings uh, to Sirchan. And now I would like to come back to uh, Skopje to our colleague and friend Buja Buja Osmani. Buja, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, Michael. Well, I think that in in a globalized world, we we uh, migration and brain drain is simply an inevitable phenomenon. So I think our overarching goal should be transforming it into a brain circulation from brain drain to brain circulation rather than trying to, uh, to, uh, to stop it. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, the migration dynamic is directly linked to the perspective that a country provides to people or the future of the country provides to, uh, to people. And here, uh, among our people, the psychological frame, uh, psychological uh, frame is as such that people uh, equalize uh, perspective with European perspective. So actually, the even the uh, migration dynamic and brain drain dynamic will be dictated by the pace that both sides, we, the region, and EU will uh, will impose uh, will impose in regard to EU EU perspective. And the second mo most important factor, I think, is the current opportunities that the region and the country uh, provides. And I cannot see better uh, platform at the moment rather than regional initiatives that we have been building in the recent uh, years. Let's just, uh, I want to remind you that on the 9th and on the 10th, actually, of November in Sofia, within the Berlin process, and the joint chairmanship of North Macedonia and Bulgaria, we expect that the leaders will endorse the multi-annual action plan on common regional market that incorporate the four freedoms uh, that will be, I think, uh, uh, will create this crucial avenues for youth to move within the region and actually to expand and to create a single market of 18 uh, million people. And we should invest in this platform, especially now that was lightened by the economic investment package of European Commission with uh, 9 billion. So a combination of European perspective and investing in the regional platform, I think it's the solution for creating the alternatives and opportunities for, for young people. Thank you, Buja. From uh, Skopje to Sarajevo, to uh, Foreign Minister Josip Berkic. Josep, the floor is yours. Thank you, Minister. Um, the engagement and questions posed by our colleagues in the panel uh, to all of us is showing uh, the expectation from the younger uh, generation of our work. And on the general terms, who would not be willing to engage in a dialogue with the youth organizations because basically you are engaging with your own future. You're engaging with the people who are going to be 
in a couple of years, maybe in the uh, same chair that we are occupying uh, today. So this is by far the best investment and beyond everything a uh, possibility that all of us should be uh, considering. In Bosnia and Herzegovina, we had this uh, experience decades ago when we were discussing with the youth forum on many uh, topics and discussions and some of those uh, people were, that were engaged became the uh, 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 politicians in, in, in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, on the issue, uh, this, this, all of this could be you know, institutionalized and to, to discuss with the um, government, one government for all of you who knows that the constitutional arrangement of my country recognize different levels of the government state entity and then cantonal within some, within the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, all of uh, those levels have their own constitutional competencies. So for the questions of the migration, for the questions of education, for the questions of um, uh, interest for the young people, it should be inclusive for all the levels of governance in, in uh, uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. This is basically in our, in our case. Um, I cannot agree more with you, uh, uh, dear colleague Rudd, that uh, 10 years for young people is really uh, too much, too much time to, to, to uh, you know, wait for the palpable, tangible results uh, out of it. Um, believe it or not, uh, I was a young when, when a promise for us was given in Thessaloniki 2003 for a speedy access to uh, the, uh, the EU once we uh, meet the uh, criteria, and only couple of countries have uh, uh, succeeded in doing so. But I'm not tired in pushing Bosnia and Herzegovina closer to the EU. Uh, and uh, I hope that this is going to uh, result with the fulfilled promise from your side and done reforms from our side in order to have better shaped society. Final word on the what uh, uh, a colleague, uh, Mr. Latal mentioned on the uh, rule of law, definitely this is not a uh, uh, one-time job, one-day job, one-week job. This is the uh, entire uh, hard work uh, job that we need to, uh, you know, uh, do in order to finally go through the transition from the uh, totalitarian uh, regimes back in the uh, end of the 80s, 90s, in order to get fully transformed uh, society where the rule of law would be the pillar of uh, all of the uh, freedoms that needs to be uh, guaranteed for the uh, citizens of Bosnia and Herzegovina, but also for the, for the entire region. Thank you, Josep. And now from Sarajevo to Belgrade to Mr. Jankovic. Pavle Jankovic, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you very, very much, Minister Roth. Um, in some sense, I'm, I'm fortunate that I'm not a politician, but a humble diplomat. And uh, the kind of work that I have been doing uh, with my entire crew here over the past uh, nine years in regional cooperation was precisely to set the framework conducive to uh, a closer cooperation in our region. Uh, we must remember one very simple thing, you know, the policies of the 1990s, uh, have created devastation across the Western Balkans. Uh, we are now mending the fences. We are now dispelling prejudices. We are creating the groundwork that will uh, be able to absorb the kind of policies, but also the kind of support, such as the economic investment package that is coming. I could not agree more uh, with, uh, with what distinguished speakers before me said, especially uh, on the topic of uh, the uh, common regional market. You know, the common regional market is one of the fruitions of the kind of engagement that uh, uh, your country has invested in this region through the Berlin process, Mr. Roth. And uh, to have now an opportunity to, to, to have the infrastructure, the, the, the society-wide architecture conducive to creating prosperity for the young people is a very important element. But I'm, I'm very much concerned that in the future, uh, and uh, I'm speaking about also the counterparts in the different ministries of foreign affairs and different line ministries, we are developing the kind of infrastructure where young people will not, uh, as, as the distinguished uh, Minister Haradina said, 
we're not going to be afraid to travel across our region, are not going to be afraid to exchange, that they're not going to regard each other through a system of prejudices, but rather in a free and open environment, which will help them develop their full potential. I think this is a very important role. So not just the rule of law, but the overall architecture conducive to death in our society. This is a transformation. So please speed up the opening of chapters, speed up the beginning of negotiations for everyone. This is the way to engage the entire societies in a transformative and, and uh, energetic uh, discussion. Thank you. Thank you, dear friends, dear participants. What a great journey, but it's not over yet. I would like to thank all speakers and I would like to close the panel. Let me just say a few words to sum up the discussion. I truly believe it was crucial to highlight these important questions. We can't stress enough, enough that the European path of the Western Balkan countries is our joint task. It's an obligation for the EU, for 27 member states, but also for the Western Balkan states. Um, and the future European generations are our joint future. The young people are the special guest stars of this conference. I previously mentioned the youth workshops that took place during the past months. I very much invite you to join us again on the next panel after a short coffee break. On this next panel, moderated by the Sarajevo-based journalist Adelheid Wölfel, we will have six youth representatives on the panel and they will be debating with Vice President Suica, the Deputy Prime Minister Nikola Dimitrov from North Macedonia and myself. Thank you everyone and see you again in a few minutes around 6.30. Thank you and stay safe.